Good afternoon, folks. I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to glue bees to pins. So you will want your little tiny bees. You want some trays or your box to pin into. You'll need some pins and you'll need some glue. Um, we this don't, is, we this don't is, go ahead. This is regular glue. We don't use fancy glue. Um, this is water soluble. Mm -hmm. So there is the potential to be able to remove the specimen from a pin if it's desirable. Um, and so this is what I do. I put a little droplet of glue on a hard surface. Okay. And then I'll take a pin. And I'm going to roll. Okay, just see a sec. If you can see that. There we go. I'm going to roll the glue around the pin like that. Can you see it? Yeah, we got it. Everybody okay, see it? now I'm going to find a bee that's laying on its left hand side yes. and I'm going to glue it. I'm just going to holding the tip of the pin on the table. I'm just going to press the glue onto the side, the middle of the bee. And then I'm going to take the specimen and I'm going to pin it on, on a high angle into the little box. And this way, if the bee slowly rotates on the pin, immediately it'll have a point of contact with the foam here so that it won't roll off or roll down or move around at all. Okay, so we got it on the top there. Let me get, I, I'm dense, so let me get this straight. Well, what if this thing just slumps? It's not gonna slump off. No, if it if it rolls, yeah, um, it'll, it'll still be on the pin. It'll have a point of contact with the foam, like the the one end of the bee is going to touch the foam, and so it'll stop moving. Okay, and then it'll glue in place like that. And so, viewers should note that the glue only ever touched the, the specimen in that one spot. So I didn't get glue all over the whole side of the specimen because I've seen a bunch of those. Um, it's not. Um, attached on some weird angle. It's always on the right side. <laughs> I, Sorry. Right. If you're going to glue me to a stake, you would glue me right here. And yeah. I would be planking for eternity. If any of you are cartoonists, we'd love to see you render that. OK, um, keep going. So let's, do, let's do a few more just so you can see the process. Let me get in close. Stop. Don't. I'm now in focus. Go ahead. OK. So I'm just going to roll a small amount of glue onto the pin. Got it. Um, then I'm going to flip a specimen over so it's on its left hand side like so. Then I'm going to put the tip of the pin on the surface and I'm going to just press the glued part onto the side of the specimen. Okay, we got it. And then I'm going to slide that in on a high angle or a low angle or the angle as you see and it all glue in place there. Okay. Um, you want to make sure that you roll the glue. Let's do another one. I'm in focus now. So you want to ensure that you roll the glue all the way around the pin. If the glue's only on one side of the pin, then when the pin flexes, mm -hmm. the glue will pop off. Okay. So let's find another little tiny specimen, this little dialectus. Now it's all curled up and stuff. It's like, how are you going to get it in, the, in its art little place? Well, there? you just do the best you can. OK. And there you go. OK. You've done this before. And so once you have a little system going, then uh, you can do, you know, a bunch of them at a time. You will find that the glue is going to get more viscous as your little droplet of glue starts to dry out. The faster you are, the more uh, you'll be working with lower, higher viscosity. Can you get too much lower, glue on there? I don't know. Yeah, you don't want a giant glob. Like that's globby. That's a that's a lot. That's okay. good. That's fine. It's fine. Okay. If you had double that much, maybe it's too much. It, it could also depend on the size of the specimen. So here's another one. I'm going to flip it onto its left side so I can glue it on its right side. I put the tip of the pin down and then I 
use just the surface tension from the glue to stick it to the side. You're going to be sticking it on a leg and part of the side of the bee. And so one thing you'll notice here is that I'm not using a pinning block or anything to set the height of the specimen. Um, I've glued tens of thousands of bees. But let's just take a look and, and look at the height. So that one's around eight mil. That one's around nine. That one's around eight. That one's about seven. And so you can see that ideally the top of the specimen will be seven or eight millimeters from the top of the pin. Mm -hmm. If you're gluing them in the middle of the pin, that's way too low. We're not gonna have any space for labels, especially if we're adhering two, three, four labels to these things. So you wanna set a standard on the first one and then as you do more and you're sitting make sure that you're aiming for that set height i don't measure them or anything i just know i can just eyeball it and so as you see mine ranged from seven to almost 10 mil seven's better so that's your target is seven five is not enough space five mils from the top of the pin is not enough space Six is okay, seven is ideal. Um, and bigger specimens you want a little bit higher, like bumblebees, because they take up so much space on the on the pin. Yeah, just to clarify, you wouldn't glue a bumblebee? No, you wouldn't glue a bumblebee, um, ideally. Please don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but if you're pinning bumblebees or large spring uh, anthophora, you know, you could put them at six mil okay. instead of eight, and that's good. Okay. don't stress about it aim for seven uh, that's perfect is there anything else we want to talk about i think this is good i think uh if you have any questions you can always email them to us uh, and we will put them in the weekly blog and uh good luck with all your gluing out there thank you